Today, Whitbread is one of the UK's most successful businesses, and for almost three centuries, our brands have been at the very heart of British life. It all started 275 years ago, in the reign of King George II, when Samuel Whitbread went into partnership with Godfrey and Thomas Shewell on the 11th of December, 1742. Their partnership then owned just two small breweries, the leases on 14 pubs, 18 horses, and 1,933 butts. Before the 1736 Gin Act, Britain was in the grip of an orgy of gin drinking, which was turning people into degenerate alcoholics. The Gin Act attempted to halt this by imposing heavy duties on distillers and forcing people to take out licenses to sell gin. Beer and ale became increasingly popular and the part of the daily diet of every man, woman and child. Beer was universally approved as a healthy, wholesome drink, suitable for all the family, and Samuel Whitbread was quick to capitalize on this opportunity. Whitbread became one of the first brewers to develop dark brown porter, which uniquely in those days could be made in bulk, and it was cheap, which made it highly popular with manual workers. The Chisel Street Brewery was built in 1750, specifically for the mass production of porter, and within eight years, the Whitbread Brewery was the largest porter brewery in London. The 1780s was a time of great change and excitement at the Chisel Street Brewery. A modern man, Samuel Whitbread was a pioneer of new brewing techniques, and in 1784, he installed the first ever steam engine at the brewery, designed by none other than the famous engineer James Watt. In 1787, King George III and Queen Charlotte paid a visit to Chisel Street, and according to the newspapers of the day, the king was wonderfully pleased with the innovative steam engine. Innovation has always been a hallmark of the Whitbread business. Fast forward a few decades to the 19th century, and we find Whitbread's next major innovation, bottled beer. In the 1840s, railway mania had taken hold of the country, and every large town and city was connected to the railway network. For the first time, there was a fast and cheap method of exporting products out of the brewery. In the 1860s, Whitbread was the first large London brewery to bottle its own beer. By the outbreak of the First World War, Whitbread was the greatest beer bottler in the land, exporting as far afield as Egypt, India, the Americas, and even China. People's tastes were changing, and beers were becoming noticeably weaker. Lager was first introduced in the UK in the 1880s, but without much success. During the First World War, beer became even weaker, and even the Prime Minister of the day, Lloyd George, commented on it, remarking that, the gravity of beer has lightened and the public has become accustomed gradually to drinking lighter and less alcoholic and more salubrious beverages. By the 1960s, we had spotted that the UK was developing a thirst for lager, and in 1968, Whitbread reached a deal to brew Heineken under license. By now, the UK pub landscape was changing. Beer sales were still strong, but there were growing opportunities in wines and spirits, which Whitbread was quick to exploit worldwide. Perhaps the most important trend was a new focus on food. With drink driving laws reducing alcohol consumption and an increase in disposable income making eating out ever more popular, the 60s saw dining rooms starting to take pride of place over the public bar. Once again, Whitbread spotted the trend and launched Beef Eater, along with other food-led restaurant brands. The next chapter in Whitbread's story was even more dramatic. Ever alert to new opportunities, Whitbread spotted the US trend for budget hotels. Already the owner of hundreds of pub restaurants around the UK, each with a large car park, the solution was beautifully simple build budget hotels on the land. And so it was that the first travel inn opened in 1987, next to the Watermill Beef Eater in Basildon. Today, Premier Inn is the UK's largest hotel company, with over 770 hotels and 70,000 bedrooms. Awarded best hotel chain in the UK, it welcomes millions of guests through its door every year, giving them a great night's sleep, guaranteed. Meanwhile, through the 90s, and again starting in the US, another trend was emerging, quality barista-made coffee. So in 1995, Whitbread bought a small London-based coffee chain from the Costa Brothers, 
and began an accelerated expansion which has had a major influence on the growth of coffee culture and how the UK spends its leisure time. With over 2,300 Costa stores in the UK, 7,000 Costa Express machines and 1,300 stores in 29 countries across the globe, Costa is now the world's second largest coffee shop brand. At first glance, the Whitbread of today seems a far cry from those two breweries, 14 pubs, 18 horses and a monster pile of barrels. But looking back, we see that every step has been guided by the same deep-rooted values and single-minded focus on the customer, which has led to Whitbread becoming the highly successful modern business of today.